we're here with Representative Zerwas. Do you want to uh, spell that for folks? Or? Yeah, Nick Zerwas, Z-E-R-W-A-S, uh, House District 30A. So I live in Elk River. Yeah, and you represent Elk River and then the area surrounding that. What, what's your boundaries there? Yep, I have Elk River, Big Lake, Big Lake Township, and then a little bit of Otsego. All right. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Republican measure included in yesterday's uh, bill to penalize protesters. What, what's the GOP position on that? Well, I think what's important to realize is the narrow, uh, the narrowness of that provision. We're talking about people that block traffic on a freeway, block access to an airport, or block the light rail train. And so it certainly isn't... Uh, penalizing protesters as much as people that are participating in illegal blockades. And so it's three things that are already illegal under current statute, and we're taking it from a misdemeanor to a gross misdemeanor. All right, well, that a gross misdemeanor, uh, pardon me for challenging you on this, but a gross misdemeanor sounds like a penalty. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah, yeah. A moment ago you said we're not penalizing protesters, but if they protest well, you could, in this manner. You could protest in a million ways and in a million places that are 100% legal and isn't blocking a freeway, isn't blocking access to an airport, and isn't blocking a train. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you block a freeway, you ought to go to jail. Uh, why? Why? It's against the law. It's a huge, uh, huge impact on commerce, public safety, and people trying to get around. I talked on the floor of the house yesterday about two constituents I had that contacted me that had huge issues with trying to get to the airport to see a dying mother who missed a flight and wasn't there while her mother took her last breath. And I had an, an, a woman who contacted me who waited three months for an appointment uh, down at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and while driving down there, got stopped by a freeway blockade, didn't make it to her appointment, called back down to the Mayo Clinic, and they were told, sure, we could get you back in in another three months. And so she sat at home in Elk River in pain for an extra 90 days waiting for relief. This impacts real people and the Republican caucus and two dozen Democrats believe that it needs to be a more severe penalty. Uh, you mentioned that it's already against the law, so why stiffen the penalties if, it, if it's illegal? Current, the idea for a penalty for a, for a bill, for a law, is to either deter the activity or punish the activity. Clearly, it's not being deterred, and we don't believe the punishment is significant enough. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, what about DFL contentions that this infringes on uh, the right to free and peacefully assemble? You do not peacefully assemble in the center lane of I-94. You have no constitutional First Amendment right to block a freeway. If you believe you do, you're wrong. You've been misinformed. You do not have a right to block a freeway or to block access to an airport or to stop a train. You, that's not a right of yours. Americans have long had a tradition of civil disobedience in such a disruptive manner. How do you contend with uh, the history of Americans? For instance, Representative Lesh mentioned the Edmund Pettus Bridge during the Civil Rights March. There have been other times when Americans have broken many laws in protest. Uh, what about, what do you make of that? The bill simply says if you block a freeway, if you close an airport, if you block a train, you should go to jail. I stand behind that. Okay. Thank you, Representative Zerwas. I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Have a great day.